Well, welcome back. And now we're going to move into artificial ventilation. Artificial ventilation is basically when we use our own devices that we have to ventilate a patient. A patient who's not breathing. A patient who we might describe as apneic. So there are many different devices that we can use to ventilate a patient. One of those being a bag valve mask, also called an AMBU bag. Uh, and we can use these to ventilate someone who's not breathing. And so what is our purpose of assisting these individuals is if they can't control their ventilations anymore um, and that they're not managing themselves, we're going to have to assist their ventilation so that they can get that exchange of gases in the alveoli. Otherwise, the alveoli have collapsed shut and we have atelectasis. Now, this atelectasis, we don't have exchange of gases when the alveoli shut, so we've got to keep them open. And so we use things like PEEP, positive end expiratory pressure, so that when we're breathing for them, when we let go of the bag valve mass, there's still a pressure inside the alveoli to keep it open. And we have the exchanges of gases from a high concentration to an area of low concentration. So we can exchange the oxygen and CO2. And so in this section on the study guide, I want you to think about Describing the ventilation of an apneic patient, what is the purpose, uh, what is the indications, what are the contraindications, what are the procedures? How do you assist ventilation of a conscious patient? And the biggest thing with dealing with conscious patients, when you do this, if they can't control their ventilations anymore and they're getting tired, you're going to need to assist them. The second thing is you're going to have to time your ventilations. When they take a breath in, you give them a little bit extra breath. They're just not getting that full tidal volume that they need, so you're going to have to give them a little extra breath. By doing that, they're going to get that oxygenation, and eventually their respiration and their ventilation are going to, their ventilations are going to slow down because their respirations are going to start to increase because they're exchanging that oxygen and carbon dioxide. Now, another way that we might ventilate someone is by using a oxygen powered ventilation device and this is a oxygen powered ventilation device the issue with these is if you're not paying attention and um, watching your patient and ventilating until you see chest rise if you just breathe for them you could possibly cause what we call barotrauma or pop lung uh, too much pressure inside the chest these are a manually triggered device that you press the button and it sends oxygen through, pressurized oxygen through into the lungs and it causes them to inflate and then you release the valve and then the passively deflate. Uh, this would help uh, because it adds more pressure so you might have that positive end expiratory pressure um, but you still don't have that ability to dial it in and dial it out uh, with a PEEP valve that you would place on a BVM. Now with someone you put CPAP on, they need to make sure that they can control their airway, that they're alert that they can control their airway, and that there's not going to be any airway compromise from vomiting or secretions. Because once you put that mask on, you can't get to the airway very well because of the mask being on that person. It does have continuous positive airway pressure through PEEP, but we can't get to them very well. So there's some contraindications on putting those on altered mental status patients or people who can't control their airway. And some issues that we see with these devices, the manually triggered ventilation device, CPAP, BVM, is that we can cause gastric distension. Distension is when we increase size of an object, and gastric is the stomach. So we're, we're putting passive air in, and it's going into the trachea, but it's also going into the stomach. And if we're doing too fast of ventilations and we don't have the head adjusted right, we can start causing ventilations into the abdomen and start causing gastric distension. And so how do you prevent gastric distension is by proper positioning of the airway or by inserting one of those blind airways or the superglottic airway devices, and that can reduce some of your gastric distension. Now, PEEP, as we previously talked about, is that positive end expiratory pressure. COPD patients do this all the time by peeping themselves, by <laughs> decreasing the opening that they're pushing air through, causing end pressure to be pushed back into the lungs, keeping those alveoli open. 
we can also do this through a resistance valve that we put onto a bag valve mask and then we dial it up and we can put 10 of peep, 5 of peep, 7 and a half, 12, 15, so on and so forth, depending on your manufacturer that you get it from. And we can cause peep to be used to keep those alveoli open so we don't have to ventilate as much, but we get that oxygen CO2 gas exchange. And then why is PEEP important? So that we prevent atelectasis and we get that oxygen CO2 gas exchange. Now, finally, the last thing I want to cover that some people don't always talk about is what an automatic transport ventilator is and when do we use it? So an automatic transport ventilator is just exactly as the name sounds. It's automatic, so it's going to self-drive itself. It's used for transport, and it's a ventilator that continues ventilation. It's lightweight, it's durable, it's seen in a lot of services um, that want to have that for EMTs because it also runs off of portable oxygen supply. It controls the ventilation rate and the amount of tidal volume. It also has a pop-off valve that controls the pressure, uh, but it's not great in acute respiratory distress syndrome uh, or pulmonary edema where we need high pressures uh, to deliver to these individuals. So if you're thinking about using one of these with coronavirus, it's not going to work very well because they need high airway pressures and it's going to have a hindrance because it has a pop-off valve that's going to shoot every time you're trying to dial up enough pressure to make it work. It's greater for your resuscitative efforts uh, if you're needing to ventilate a patient for a long transport time. Uh, maybe you've got 30 minutes to an hour and you've got a pulse back, but you need to continue to ventilate them and ventilate them with oxygen. And that's where one of these is going to come in. Uh, contraindications for using one of these is you have an airway obstruction, you have resistance or poor lung compliance. Maybe they have emphysema or COPD. Maybe they have a pneumothorax and we don't want to increase that pressure inside the, the lung cavity. Um, and then children less than five years of age, we want to make sure that we're checking that manufacturer's recommendation. But the advantages is that it is an oxygen-rich mixture that's being delivered to the patient. It frees up a rescuer from having to ventilate every single breath. And it also um, attaches to an ET tube or other rescue airway device. And it's, it's very portable. Um, but some of the disadvantages is it does need an oxygen source. Um, it is unable to detect increasing airway resistance, so it's going to keep giving ventilations. It it's, doesn't have all the bells and whistles. It just gives a, a breath, depending on what you're setting, you set it at. Um, so what, what do these look like? Well, an example of these, these ventilators uh, looks a little bit like uh, this. Um, let me go ahead and get that a little bit smaller here. Uh, it looks a little bit like this and move my picture. Uh, this is this is your automatic transport ventilator right here. Uh, so you can see the various settings and the pressures um, and it works really well. But again, it's not going to work for your COVID cases and it's not going to work for your pulmonary edema. It's more for your resuscitative efforts. So that concludes our section on the final section of the respiratory on our ventilation type devices um, with uh, providing that positive pressure to individuals through either a BVM, CPAP, or an automatic transport ventilator, or a manually triggered ventilation device. Now let's kind of dive into our medical emergencies, but before we do that, we have to understand patient assessment. So let's discuss some things about patient assessment. 